Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV. I'm Kristen Folletti. Today's Friday, May 17th, 2013, and here's your SiliconANGLE Daily Roundup. Google has outlined its vision for the future of online streaming video. At Google I.O., company representatives made the case for VP9 video technology. VP9 is a royalty-free open-source video codec. It's the, it's the successor to VP8 technology that Google unveiled only three years ago. The updated codec doubles image quality over VP8 for the given number of bits per second. Google's solution may have a difficult time competing against H.264, the most widely used video codec. Most mobile device chipsets are already capable of decoding H.264, which is a huge advantage. Its successor, H.265, is now complete and also offers twice the image quality, which puts its performance slightly ahead of VP9. Unlike Google's video codec, both H.264 and H.265 require royalty payments to MPEG-LA, which collectively licenses all the patents used in the codec on behalf of their owners. Organizations will have to choose between the ease of implementation offered by H.264 and the long-term cost benefit offered by VP9. Mobile app developers who use Google's AdMob ad network can look forward to an updated version of the platform. The upgrade includes a number of new features. Developers will be able to identify the cost per acquisition they're aiming for with the new AdWords conversion optimizer. It's a feature that allows developers to put their ad campaigns on autopilot. The system can automatically run the ad types that are most likely to drive the most app installations for the given budget. The new AdMob platform also includes filters, allowing developers to customize their campaigns by blocking specific topics or specific ads from showing up in their apps. The update rolls all the new features into a new user-friendly interface. Developers should begin seeing the new platform in the near future. Apple, who has long been rumored to want to disrupt the broadcast television model, has partnered with CW to take another step in that direction. CW television programs will now be free to watch on Apple TV the day after they broadcast. Viewers will be able to use CW TV Now app to watch popular shows like The Vampire Diaries without cable authentication. CW President Mark Podowitz spoke about the network's expansion plans, saying, This year, we're reaching more viewers on more platforms. We're reaching our audience everywhere they are, and we want advertisers to be with us everywhere we go. There's no word on how Apple and CW will share the revenue generated from the limited advertising that will accompany each episode. Apple currently sells television content in its iTunes digital music marketplace, but this is the first direct partnership with a broadcast network that provides television content for free. As the media landscape continues to shift, it'll be interesting to see how other broadcast networks react to this unprecedented Apple union. A new report by IDC and App Annie paints a troubling picture for handheld gaming devices. In the first quarter of 2013, consumer spending on games for the Sony Vita and Nintendo 3DS were down significantly from the last quarter of 2012. That's not unusual, as dedicated gaming devices rely heavily on holiday shopping season. However, their newest and most formidable competitors don't have that seasonal dependence. Consumer spending on games in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store rose considerably in the first and compared to the last quarter of 2012. Some analysts believe that the writing is on the wall. Mobile apps can be developed and released faster than games for dedicated systems. The supply of independent developers building games for mobile devices is virtually unlimited. More than 2 billion mobile devices are expected to ship this year alone. The report suggests that if current trends continue, it will be extremely difficult for dedicated handheld gaming devices to be competitive or even relevant. Congress has added itself to the list of organizations who are concerned with the privacy implications of Google Glass. A bipartisan Congressional Privacy Caucus sent Google a letter with questions about the topic. The caucus wants to know how Google plans to incorporate privacy protections, how it will go about getting consent to be filmed from non-users, how facial recognition will be used, and what information Google itself would collect. Congress has asked Google to respond by June 14th. 
There's no indication that Google would be breaking any laws if the device failed to address the concerns that were raised. Glass product director Steve Lee has indicated that Glass currently operates within the boundaries set by Google's privacy policy. Yahoo and Twitter are joining forces to give Yahoo's homepage a new con content source. Tweets from the real-time social media giant will begin to appear directly in the Yahoo newsfeed. Yahoo will include relevant and personalized tweets alongside its news stories. Some analysts see the partnership as a logical evolution of media. Twitter is considered by many to be one of the most reliable sources for late-breaking news. If all goes well, the partnership could extend to Yahoo's mobile apps. Yahoo CEO Marissa Mayer described the deal in a statement saying, Updates direct from politicians, celebrities, media outlets, and other publishers have become an important source of real-time news and information. 140 characters can connect athletes with their fans, capture live chatter from the red carpet, and inspire global debate. The financial arrangement between the two companies hasn't been disclosed. Carlos Slim, the previous world's richest person, is suffering from the greatest of first world problems this morning as Bill Gates has reclaimed the title for the first time since 2007. While Microsoft's financial status has been in question due to less than stellar success of Windows 8 and their Surface RT devices, this change in the throne is said to have come from the 14% drop in Slim's stock value. Lucky for Gates, a lot of his fortune also comes from his stake in services like the Canadian National Railway. Looks like Bill Gates will wear the crown once more for the time being. And that's your SiliconANGLE Daily Roundup for Friday, May 17th, 2013. For continuous coverage on tech innovation and daily breaking analysis, join us back Monday morning beginning at 8.30 a.m. Central here at News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV.